And what a week it was. On Monday, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos said he would fly on the first human spaceflight of his company's spacecraft. This mission will launch on July 20th, which is the anniversary of the Apollo 11 lunar landing in 1969. And if you want to know how old I am, I watched that event on TV. But not to be outdone. Space tourism rival Sir Richard Branson wants to be the first and is scheduled to fly into space with an earlier date of about July 4th. In my opinion, let them both go into space because in space no one can hear you. And while we're at it, let's send Native American Senator Elizabeth Warren. Senator Warren took to the airwaves to blast billionaires like Bezos and Musk to complain that they did not pay any personal income taxes. Senator Warren said that Jeff Bezos' trip to outer space is being financed by all the rest of the U.S. taxpayers who paid their taxes so that Jeff Bezos didn't have to. And Jeff Bezos kept all his money and used it on a space ticket. Well, Senator Warren, let me give you a clue. The reason they don't pay taxes is because you and your government buddies provide all kinds of tax dodges for the wealthy. Oh, and by the way, how did you and your husband attain a net worth of about $12 million on government and teaching salaries? Hmm. The S&P 500 set a new record closing high, topping its previous record level from as far back as Thursday. The Dow and the Nasdaq also ended in positive territory. The 10-year yield dipped back below 1.5%. But the big ignored news was inflation. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reported on Thursday that its headline consumer price index rose by 5%, or by the most since 2008. And the little people are told that inflation is transitory. But just remember... Government stupidity is permanent. And the best way to beat or at least keep up with inflation is to hold assets. And with that, let's take a look at the charts. And we're going to switch things up just a little bit today. We're going to look at the spiders Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF or the diamonds, the DIA. And the close on Friday was 345.12. From this bottom here all the way up to this point here with a slight sell off here, it's still been a great ride. And particularly since November of 2020, through here we have a bottom channel line looking like that. And then a top channel line moving through like that. Not exactly straight, but you get the idea. So we're trending down to the lower limits of that channel. But I think we're going to pick up some speed into next week and the week after and head back on up. But still within that channel, I don't see anything in the price chart that tells me otherwise. Here in volume, we had a little bit of a taper into this week but uh, we'll see what next week brings into the mac again we have the fast line that has just crossed through the slow line but it's very very shallow very very slight and we saw the same thing say back there not quite there but uh, certainly here and each time it got reflected back on up and then continued in a very nice move. Not uh, too hot and not too cold. And I think that's still where we are. Into the histogram, you can see that didn't elevate all that much. And I don't think this uh, move down here is going to be very deep. So we'll continue to watch that. But looking at the price rate of change, this looks like a rope all the way on out with the uh, slow line moving very gently through this way and then the fast line doing sawtoothing up and above and it actually really calmed down in the last couple of months and again i don't see any real change to that relative strength still at a relatively moderate 66.09 not too hot and certainly not too cold it is trending down but it still has that elevation above that midline so i think everything is fine 
And that is also shown here in the stochastics. Very nice move in that oversold territory, say above that 80 all the way up here to 100. We're at an 88.89 on the fast line, and that's just fine. Moving here into the Williams, pretty much the same thing. Everything looks nice. That bottom here, 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 and so far we're at that point there. So nice move on up here, and I think we continue to stay in that overbought territory. We might pierce through down here. We'll have to wait and see, but I don't think there's anything major in the news or otherwise that's going to change the trajectory of this price chart. This looks real nice. Now the diamonds looks very similar to the spiders. And the NASDAQ and the Russell, they look a little bit different. Maybe next week we'll take a look at those two indices. But uh, the Dow and the spiders look like things are going to continue on in this path, which is great because assets continue to gain value in comparison to inflation. And for today, that's Chudog Charts. Thank you.